over 25 years. Mr. Gorbachev, tear down this wall. For WICR, I'm Nick Rippo. So, Chris, I have an important segment I want to talk about. Okay. It's near and dear All to right. me. All right. Uh, so, over the weekend, Pope Francis caught a lot of flack for talking about or using the word genocide to describe the Armenian genocide. Now, the Turks have been playing a game of semantics for many years about it. Like, they're basically saying... They didn't do it? That, uh, and yeah, and long end and the short end of it is that they didn't do it. Right. They think that they're absolved of responsibility, kind of because uh, the previous successing empire... They're the successor to the Ottoman Empire, who they consider to be the group of people who committed the genocide. Of course. Now, Pope Francis got a lot of flack, and the Turks recalled their envoy to the Vatican as a result of this, which is a common Turk Turkish tactic that's been going on, because a couple of years ago... Uh, when the United States had a bill that passed through the Senate and through the House, the Turks recalled their ambassador here and threatened to cut off any sort of military ties that we had with them. And the problem was the military. Seventy percent of all our our, if our logistics and everything else that we use that went to the Middle East goes through Turkey. So you can see that that's a big issue. So the United States has been basically just catering to the Turks, even though they've had extreme pressure by Armenian lobby groups and uh, politicians who support the cause of recognizing the genocide to basically just quash the issue before it becomes an issue for the Turks and Americans. So personally, as an Armenian, and I've heard all the horrible stories that happened to people in my family and everyone else, and it wasn't just Armenian genocide, it was Armenians, it was Greeks, it was some Jews, I mean, not so much, you, you know how it goes, typical cases, but this, like... Uh, Turkey was basically yeah. having an ethnic cleansing to Turkify, yeah, Turkify the country. So I think that the United States needs to take the moral responsibility. And on the 100th anniversary next Friday, Obama needs to use the word genocide to describe the events that happened. Because, you know, th you can't mess with the souls of the dead like that. It, it, I mean, I mean if, you, if, you, if you're using genocide to describe a genocide, then I think it's okay. Well, exactly. But the thing is, like, if you read if you read publications or language that comes out from the White House or for anybody, it sounds closer to the Turkish idea of it, which is that there were mass deportations and tragedies happened on the road. Tragedies just don't happen on the road. No. No, it's no. organized. It was, no. it was, if you look at, if you can go to Deir Zor, which is the Ameri uh, Armenian version of Auschwitz, it's, just, it's in the Syrian desert, you could literally scratch the surface of the desert and you were more than likely going to find bones because it's a mass graveyard, the whole area. And the Turks deny responsibility for it. Even though there's plans and everything that say, you know, bring the Armenians from here to here. They might deny the same thing uh, that they uh, destroyed the island my family owned. What does that have to do with what? Well, I'm trying to say... No, I'm saying the island is the same... Oh, yeah. Well, that was the same thing to my family, too. No, th that's a completely different... I'm, say, I'm saying that, that, that my family was the Kenya of Kenya. Kenya was the was the um, capital city of Crete before the island took over. Yeah, but there wasn't a genocide there when... They when seized the city. I know. That's, all right, Chris. Anyways, my point is... Uh, I think America needs to take the moral high ground, and they need to recognize it, because what happens is once genocide isn't recognized... It continues because imagine if someone they put an end to it or they they called people out they held people responsible imagine they held people responsible before the Holocaust happened they held the Turkish leaders responsible maybe Hitler would have thought twice about doing what he did because Hitler did say and he used it as an excuse that no one remembers the people who committed the uh, no one remembers that the Armenians died in the genocide and no one remembers the people that committed it so Hitler his blueprint for what he did to the Jews was taken out of the Ottoman Empire's handbook of uh, the genocide. Yeah, but I'm just saying that the yeah, obviously that's with a lot of people, but I'm just saying it's not it's horrible, but they did kill other people in other areas. I Chris, this isn't a debate, man. I don't know why you're like getting off on this. No, I don't know what, 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 are you saying that we need to recognize the word genocide or are you are you talking historically here? I'm saying no. I'm saying that the Armenian genocide needs to be recognized, Chris. That's what oh. I'm saying. Oh, okay, fine. Okay, now I understand. All right. I'm sorry. I was a little bit. I was a little bit confused if you were talking about the word or you're talking about an actual event needs to be recognized. Because it sounds like to no, me the event and the word needs to be used because the United States doesn't use the word genocide to describe the Armenian genocide. Okay, so the hundredth, the hundred fiftieth, hundred hundredth anniversary. 1915 anniversary. was the day that they. Uh, April twenty fourth, nineteen fifteen was the day that okay. they rounded up all the Armenian all intellectuals. Right. So yeah, so you're right. It needs to be recognized as a, as a horrible thing that happened, 
And we need to use the word genocide because that's essentially what it was. It's exactly what it was, yeah. And the, the term genocide was created by a scholar named Raphael Lemkin. He was Jewish, mm-hmm. right? Yeah. And he created the word genocide with while he studied the Armenian genocide. Yet at the time it was called the Armenian massacres. But then he looked at it and he and he's like, you know what? This is not. This is more than just massacres. It's genocide. So the Turks and the American government, who deny that it's a genocide, don't even know that. I guess that that word was created with the Armenians in mind. So yeah, since the word was created with that 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 thing in, that, that that event as the basis for the word, it needs to be considered a genocide. Not yeah. not a massacre. Not a mass massacre. Not a mass killing. Not 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 a deportation of, of a mass of people. It needs to be considered a genocide. And oh, that, definitely. But and now I gotta use that word because that is the word created right there. And it's a hundred years too late. I can't. You know, the only hundred years too late. Right. The exactly. only president who's ever recognized or has ever used the word genocide to describe the events. Guess who it was? Let me take a wild guess. Bill Clinton. No, a little bit before him. George Bush. Before him. Look, the only other two choices is Jimmy Carter or Ronald Reagan. Ah, it's one of those two, Chris. Reagan. Yeah. But Ronald Reagan's <laughs> from California, keep in mind. And most Armenians in this country live in California. Oh, there we go. So, California sense. and North Jersey. Oh, there we go. Yeah. And, and they, I know, I know. And, I, and a little bit outside Boston. Hey, I had a teacher who was from, uh, who was Armenian. Was he from Jer- North Jersey? Huh? Was she? she from North Jersey originally? Uh, no. She's from where I live. Well, most of my family is from North Jersey, so. I'm just saying, I'm saying. Yeah. Shaljin is definitely an Armenian name. Shalijian? Shalijian. Shalijian, I A N, yeah, Tarzian. Same yeah, thing. exactly. But yeah, so I think it's it's way too late that it has to be. It definitely needs to be recognized, and we have to stop catering to the Turks because eventually they're gonna lose their usefulness, and we're gonna be on the wrong side. Look, um, look, we gotta turn, we gotta, we gotta bring back Constantinople, man. Istanbul. Yeah, we bring back Constantinople to like the old Byzantine yeah. way of thinking. I had a I had a, a teacher at school who was Greek, and he told us that. Istanbul, which is the, the name for obviously what was Constantinople, yeah. was actually it's a play on it's funny. He he found it funny. He was Greek that it's called Istanbul because Istanbul was a nickname for for Constantinople and it was Istanpolos or something like that, which means in the city in Greek. Yeah. And the Turks took the name anyways, but it's like the jokes on them because they're using a Greek name. They couldn't even come up with their own name for it. Yeah, because um, because if you read an old island book or anything like about the islands, it will refer to Istanbul as Constantinople. Oh yeah, and then and the mark that the Turks always used to do, and the, the problem is, anyways, back to what I was saying about the genocide. And this is uh-huh. what has to do with it, and uh-huh. just talking about Constantinople re- reminded me. Uh-huh. The problem is the genocide is a continuing thing in my book because all the land that was taken by the Armenians re- has cultural artifacts on it, like all these old beautiful churches. And keep in mind, Armenians have been practicing Christianity since 301 A.D. So, is, so is, this, is this the um, Orthodox or is this yeah, the Yeah, the Roman? Armenian Apostolic, which is kind of like Orthodox. Mm. So it's kind of like the Greek and the... Uh, it's similar, but Armenians and Greeks split in like some... I forget. I think it was like so Greek. that was the same Greek schism. Yeah, it was like this, I guess, technically. But, uh... All these old churches and these old cities of, <clears throat> that have all these Armenian churches and everything and all these artifacts mm-hmm. are being... The Turks are not doing anything to preserve them. They're allowing them to be destroyed. And I think the reason they're doing that is so that they could further deny when those buildings are gone that no one was ever there, you know? It, yeah, that's what I mean. I was going to say that you're destroying, you're destroying cultures... Achievements. It's a, the it's culture's a, gone. It's an ongoing genocide. It's an ongoing cultural just like, genocide. Just like the lost colony of America. Yeah. When their, city, when their town was gone... We don't. We don't know. We don't know if exists or not. The the Turks are doing the same thing to the on the Greek side of what was Turkey because you gotta remember the Greek. The Turks are not from Turkey originally. They're from Central Asia, and all these Greek churches like like look at the Hagia Sophia, the Greeks you know bust it building that beautiful building and then the Turks turn it into a mosque if they can. Which one is this? Which, which church is this? Which one is Hagia this? Sophia. Uh, it's like the Suleiman Mosque now. It's a beautiful, it's a mosque in Turkey. If you look at the Istanbul. Oh, it's the main one that you see the with ta- Sophia, the Sophia with the towers and the sort of on top. Yeah. yeah okay. Even even around that same time, the patriarch of the Greek church was hung. Also, that's like killing the Pope. But the Turks did the same thing, and I they mean, killed all, what? I mean that that that's just that's just that's. They just, killed the patriarch him, yeah. of the Greek church, and then they've killed the. Uh, they killed the guy who was in charge of the Armenian church at the same time. It was it was an ongoing genocide, and it, it, I mean, sorry, it was a genocide for anyone who was basically a Christian minority. That was like, so. It was the Greek and the Armenians that were both genocide at the same time. Yeah, Greeks Greeks also got it a lot from, and the problem was, it was definitely really really bad on the Greeks. 
and the Greeks lived on that side of uh, the Adriatic. Yeah. And they lived, and they had Greece also, but Armenians were located in the interior of the Ottoman Empire, so it was, it was like, Armenians were literally right there. So they were in the middle, and the, Ar- and the, Ar- the Greeks were on, like the ex- the, were on the exterior of it, and the Greeks had to flee from that area. For Armenians, right. we couldn't really flee as much, because that's where we're from. You can't leave your, you can't leave your homeland. You cannot yeah. leave your homeland. You can't leave behind. But the uh, Greeks got just as bad, man. They got it really bad. But they had a country to go back to. Yeah, but the, you have to remember though, part of Turkey is was Greece, and part of Turkey was Armenia. But then, then I remember you used Greece as like the Janissaries. Yeah, Greeks and Albanians. Yeah. Like, I'm sure the Greeks did not voluntarily want to become Janissaries. They were, you know, forced to convert and. No, because like you have to understand, the Ottoman Empire did not like guns. They had to yeah, use swords. I, I was in the same class as you, Chris. Oh, that that was yeah, right, right. Do you remember, what was, it, was it my project, the Fall of the Empire from like 1793? Yeah, I guess what my project was. The beginning? Armenian genocide. <laughs> but regardless... No, but they, uh, weren't you allowed to choose? Yeah, I chose it. Yeah, I chose this, I chose mine because I wanted to see what happened to my family. That's why I chose mine because I read it in a book. Yeah, well... Before then. Regardless, Chris, this is to end this segment here with the genocide. It needs, yeah. It's about time it gets recognized. It's something yeah. that needs to be done. It's the right thing to do. And America, being that we perceive ourselves as the moral, you know, high, perceive ourselves usually on the moral high ground, uh, it's time that we kind of do it. Yeah. You know, it's just not right that we continue to deny. You can't play with this. And Obama even said, as he when he was running in 2008, that he, he was going to recognize it. And you know what? He didn't. So. Is it because of the, is this say he's right now because of the large group of Armenians living no, in this country? No, he would recognize it because. I think that what happens is they come in all idealistic, promising, everything like that, and then someone probably briefed him around April 24th and said, listen, you can't admit to it because we need Turkey as a strategic ally, and they have the second biggest air force and army in NATO, so. The point in NATO? Yeah, Turkey. They are. Oh. So. I, I, I think they're part of the North Atlantic. How, is the, how are they part of the NATO? I don't know. They are NATO, though. They're they, a NATO ally. They didn't say NATO was the North Atlantic trade or the North Atlantic... Tri- this is the part of the segment where Chris calls me out. No, I'm just asking, what does the Atlantic Trade Organization? Exactly. The organization. That's what I thought. But yeah. I'm not calling you out, I'm just asking. I know, I'm busting, I'm busting your chops, Chris. So, anyways, let's talk about Mad Men. Uh, I'm going to go on record that I don't like Roger Sterling's current mustache. You don't like it? I don't like it either. <laughs> um, I was looking at it, um, and then another thing... Pete's golf pants from last oh, week's yeah. episode. <laughs> What's going on? What is going on on that show with uh, that that woman that he keeps running? Into? I mean, this woman, this woman has no. She's never in any of the former seasons. No. She, she just shows up in this season, and he's going. Maybe I with her. Do you want to hear? It? I have two theories. Do you want to hear them? What? On her? Yeah. One's a little crazy. One's the theory's crazy. The other one's a little more realistic. The crazy one. You want to hear the crazy one, or you want to hear the realistic one first? The realistic one. I think that she's a female Don Draper. Okay, what's the crazy one? Well, let me explain the female John Draper one. I'll tell you the crazy one in a sec. Yeah. She's like probably someone who's drifting around, kind of reinventing herself, just like Don did. Right? Exactly, exactly. I think, I think she did, like, I think, you remember she said that, like, her daughter died or something? Yeah. I, I'm wondering if either she killed her, the daughter, or her husband killed the daughter. My second point is I think that she's a mass murderer. Okay, no, I think either she killed the daughter or her husband killed the daughter. And I think she's going to kill Don. Theory. It was wrong to hear two ending theories? Let me hear your two ending theories. Ending the show. I, I, I don't, at any rate, something that happened to Don Draper that he cannot recover from. He can't get divorced, that has happened. He can't lose his job, that's already happened. Alright? Neither of those things destroyed him. He has to do something that's going to destroy him. Either he's going to go to jail for crime and lose everything charismatic, lose his youth and everything else. He's going to come out an old man. And lose everything. Yeah, we remember he's a criminal technically because he. He is. He is. He is. He is right. But two, he's gonna die of some reason. Lung cancer, possibly. I Lung mean. cancer, overdose of drugs, overdose of drinking. Yeah, drinking probably. Somebody's gonna kill him. Either Sterling or Pete or that woman that you mentioned. Through. I think the woman's gonna kill him because she's like. Or but here you gotta keep this in mind though. Matthew Weiner, the guy who wrote it. Is yeah. a very very good writer, and he knows what he's doing. She could be a red herring, like she could just be like. He's a, a he, no but, no. But you gotta understand. He's knocking out everybody. You got you got Cooper dying at the end of last season, all right? Yeah. Then you, then you got Ken Cosgrove leaving. Yeah. Well, no, he's gonna be the client now. But he but still he's not really where he used he's to be. He's fired. Yeah. He's fired. 
And then you got um you got Peggy who left la a few seasons ago, but she's still on the show, but she's no longer part of of Sterling Cooper and Price, you know. No, she's part of it. I thought she I thought she was her own company, didn't she? No, no, no. They they were bought up by McCann, and yeah. now they all work. Basically, they work as an independent subsidiary of McCann, like they're owned by McCann. Yeah, well, Peggy hey, you worked for right. No, she worked for. Remember Ted Shaw and all them? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so they're they're just like they're like this is actually it's funny because this is, I, I studied this, you know, I'm advertising majors. This is how advertising is. All these big it used to be a lot of independent agencies, yeah. and now a lot of these big groups like McCann or JWT or Ogilvy started buying in all the little guys, and now they're like super companies. Are there, are, are, are any, now in this show are any of the companies that they mentioned are any of them real? Yes, McCann, the one that that, that bought them out. They mentioned Leo Burnett a lot. Leo Burnett, McCann, JWT, all real. Sterling Cooper is not real. So the one that's not real. No. And there are a few other... And Ted Shaw and all those guys. You understand that. This show... The, 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 they're going to find a way to get rid of every character some way or another. Oh, they have to, though. That's how they have to... It's not going to end nice. You got you got, you got to get rid of every single character in the show. You have to keep in mind, he's like an anti-hero. There's two ways... I think there's two ways... To, besides that, two ways this is going to end. He's going to continue going on with what he's been doing for his entire life. Or it's not going to end well. He's going to end up getting uh, arrested, murdered. He could get murdered. So you, so, so, so you agree? So you agree with me that he either has to go to jail or die at the end? Yeah. Well, I, I don't. I don't buy into that whole thing about how people are uh, thinking that he's going to fall from the building somehow. No, 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 no. Well, who's saying he's going to fall from the building? There's people, well, people out there. Say that, yeah, because they say they see the beginning of it, and you see people falling. You see, like this, you know, Don Draper, like. Silhouette falling from a building while advertisements are behind him. No, that's just no, that's just a show that he's fallen into the world of advertisement. That's what it's showing that he's in the world of advertisement. Chris, that's actually a very unique perspective. That I've never looked at it that way. That's it's him falling into the, it's 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 the soul. It's his soul falling into the world of advertisement. That's what you think. That's what I think it represents. And the other song, that that's that that part of the song is the only part of the entire song that sounds like that. The rest of the song is that background music. Yeah, it's actually a dance song for it was a two thousand like two techno uh, club song. Really? Yeah. Imagine people like taking Molly and dancing to that. That'd be so weird. Do you want taking Molly? It's like ecstasy and dancing to that. What's Molly? It's like ecstasy. Oh, it's a drug. Yeah. Did they once try like acid or something? One of the episodes, like Mad Men. Yes, yeah. Roger takes acid a lot. There was one episode where like all of them were like uh. Oh, acid they, they were on. They were on like amphetamine salts or something like. For that. like one episode, that episode yeah, remember that? That, that was one of the weirdest that episode. Was so weird. That was one of the weirdest episode compared to some ones this season that I've like seen. Sometimes in, I wish I could have that injected into me. Now I have a question. Done. When did you start watching the show? Like what season? All right, so this is I, I started watching it freshman year of college, and when it was when it was not. Remember, it was on hiatus for like three years. Yeah. Years. And so I caught up watching on Netflix, and then I picked it up on season... What are we in, season eight right now? Yeah. I started pick, I picked it up again in season five or six. The first episode I watched uh, was the one five. where... I did five. But go on. Okay. Um, when I started, I started the episode where he was in Disney World with Megan and his children. The one where he decided, where Megan, like, created a relationship with his children. And when he really, like, decided to marry Megan... Yeah. That was like the end of season six, I think. Yeah, I know what you're talking about. That's why I started. Yeah, you got you started a good You ever see you saw the original ones, right? Oh uh, no, I'm sorry I did that. Oh you did? <laughs> I did the original The first episodes are really good. But the cool thing is yeah. the show starts literally nineteen sixty and now it's nineteen I think it's like nineteen seventy now. It's sixty nine. It? It's all it's almost seventy. No, I think the last, the, uh, the last episode the episode before that they did the moon landing. Yeah, it was the first yeah. Which was sixty nine. So somewhere in 19, July nineteen sixty nine. Yes, I think it's fall nineteen sixty nine. Yeah, it's, fall, it's almost gonna be nineteen seventy. Do you think the show is gonna culminate? It's gonna make it into the seventies. I end it around there. I didn't end it right on like New Year's Eve nineteen seventy. What are there like five episodes left? Um, the four. No, I, what is channel it, is it on? I, I forget. It's like AMC. AMC. I know, I know it's, it's AMC, but what channel is AMC? Like f here, it's like forty six. Forty six. I was looking all over the place. At my house, it's like two forty two. I have no idea what channel is, Ryan. I have FiOS, and I used. I grew up with. Cable yeah, FiOS is like two twenty yeah. two forty two. I grew up with cable vision. Yeah. I switched to FiOS like freshman year, going to college. Freshman year of college, and I came home, and I was never able to proficiently learn it. It's so. like two forty two on FiOS, and all, <clears throat> I know something. All files are mostly the same, except for channel two through like seven. 
Right. Or different different areas. Two through like thirteen. Or different different areas. Like for me, I have two foxes, two NBCs, two CBSs, two NBCs, two um NBCs. Right. Where you or anybody else in this area only has one of each. No, we have two because we have HD channels. No, I'm talking about no. Oh, I know what you're saying. I have I have Philadelphia CBS, and Philadelphia NBC, Philadelphia ABC, Philadelphia Fox. Do you have New York Fox? Yeah, I do. Which is Channel Five. I channel. wonder. That's that's actually. What do you like better? Um, New York Fox. I never watch the Philadelphia stations. I always never watch the Philadelphia stations at home. I only watch New York stations only. Right. The only time I ever watched Philadelphia stations was one time when I was watching Jeopardy. I just changed the channel. I forgot to go to Channel Seven and Channel Six to so watch Jeopardy. Good God. You understand Jeopardy is uh, is is nat- nationally broadcast. Yeah. What time do we got, Chris? It is. Oh. Looks like I can't tell time all of a sudden. It looks like it's ten o'clock, almost uh, eleven o'clock. You know so, what that means? We gotta start winding down. Yeah, but let's let's just end this segment really quickly. With, 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 yeah, what do you want to say? A few yeah, final uh, thoughts. Um. Oh, we got next. What are we planning in two weeks, Chris? Well, two weeks we're gonna plan. Uh, we're planning a segment that I just that I came up this Chris morning. Very excited for this. Oh, uh, I was gonna say it was the segment this morning, but uh, James like yeah, it's too short notice. You told me last night. I could definitely. I want to give my one hundred percent for this segment. So. No. I kind of came, I kind of, this morning I wanted to do some research. So I watched a video on uh, YouTube from Watch Mojo called The Top 10 Women of Mad Men. And Chris is very excited. To okay, one, one, I'm going to ask you one question just to give us a setup for it. Who do you think number one woman of Mad Men is on this list? Joan, duh. You're close. But no, Joan is It's not. definitely not Peggy. Oh. Maybe. It is Peggy. Oh. Oh, no. no. So not basing on looks. Like, looks, Joan is number one. There's no doubt. Christina Hendricks is just too beautiful to have number one of the best-looking girls She's on Mad Men. Too beautiful. Too beautiful. Mm-hmm. My aunt actually wanted to be... My aunt actually wanted to try out to be the understudy for that character. Oh, yeah? When um, when she when she watched the show about eight, five years ago. That's funny. She told me that. She like, she's like, I want to be the understudy for Joan. I'm like, okay, fine. Nice. My aunt, my aunt, my aunt could do it, too. My aunt, my aunt is perfectly... The sweet fat character. That's great. She yeah. has she she's that sassy, my aunt. Yeah. Um yeah, yeah, my aunt my aunt my aunt you would actually would have she you, she lives in California now. But if you ever met her you would see her as like a character who could boss a person who could actually play the character. Right. Um so yeah, so we're we're based on that and um the th- the reason the, okay, so my list the list I I got the list I got this from it's not based solely on looks. It's based on character development. I see. So yeah, Peggy's definitely come a long way. With character development, so Peggy so, and Joan have come a long way. So people who read this list may not be the prettiest girls in the show, but their characters have created lasting impressions. So folks, please stay tuned next week. Well, we lost one of the characters. Though. Rachel uh, Mankin is well, she's dead. Is gone from the show. She they were singing Shiva for her the other day. Well, yeah, she died. So she's on the list. But I'm not telling you where she is. Don't tell me. Not. We'll, we'll sit down in two weeks. All right. So, babysitter CD, Chris? Uh, well, turn off the uh, set of liner. Play one more liner. See, folks, this is my first time using the, the board right so now. So turn on the computer at least. Get your screen up for the recording. Type in uh, MassCom. The, it's randomly into the computer. Into the computer, there's a tape that tells you what to type in. Chris, serenade them while I do this. All right. Okay, so as James is doing what I s- messed up a few weeks ago. Yo, James, the password's underneath the keyboard. Look underneath the keyboard. There's oh. a piece of tape. Got it. As James is trying not to lock us out and have a continuous recording while people are walking in and out of the radio station, I don't have to tell everybody. So this time it was James's fault. Um, I'm gonna. Well, James, stop the recording.